flocking is probably my favorite steering behavior, which is why I've been using it as a background here, but it's actually made up of three different behaviors, alignment, cohesion, and separation, which when used together create the flocking behavior, but they can also be used separately or in combination with any of the other steering behaviors that we've covered. The alignment steering behavior means that any given ship wants to travel in the same direction as all of the other ships, or since there are many ships going in many slightly different directions in the average direction of all the other ships. To get this steering force, we're going to loop through all the ships, collect their velocity vectors into one variable, and then limit that by max force. In code, this means we'll need our new vector and a variable, which I'll call count, to track how many ships we've looped through. Then we can loop through all objects of a certain type, which I'll make an argument for and default to object index. We need to check to make sure the ship doesn't count itself, but after that, we can add the ship's velocity into our vector and increase the count by one. Then after we've looped through all of the ships, if count is greater than zero, we can set the magnitude to max force and return that vector, which will be zero, zero if no other ships are found. And we're checking to make sure count is greater than zero because we don't want to set magnitude to max force if no other ships were found. I've duplicated a ship object and renamed it object flocker. And in the step event, I'll say apply force, align force, and place a bunch of these objects in the room. Now, when we run it, you can see that even though all of the ships start going a random direction, it takes almost no time for them to align to one unified direction. Next up, we have cohesion. Cohesion means that any given ship wants to move closer to all other ships, or like with a line, if there's more than one ship, the average position of all other ships. And we code it pretty much the same way we coded a line force, except that instead of velocity, we collect their positions. And to get an average position, we divide by count, the number of ships we loop through, and then once we have that position, we seek it. For our code, we can duplicate the align force function and add position instead of velocity, divide this by count to get the average, and instead of setting the magnitude to max force, we seek that averaged position. Now we can add this to our step event, and when we run it, we get, I don't even know. Alignment and cohesion without separation don't work that well. But if you use cohesion and wander together, you get this interesting swirling ball. And if I take the demo I used in the last video, and instead of seeking that space station, have our wander seek ships form this swirling ball by having them wander with some cohesion, and then add in the ship that chases them while they evade it, we get something that starts to look really cool, in my opinion at least, like a school of fish evading a predator. Separation is sort of the opposite of cohesion. Every ship wants to move away from other ships. However, there is going to be one big difference. If we just found the average position and fled it, we'd have two problems. First, it would cancel out cohesion. Second, thinking about this as a behavior, it doesn't really make sense. We don't need to separate from something that isn't close to us. So instead of finding the average position and fleeing it, we will get the vector that points from every other ship to our ship and then scale that vector inversely to how close it is. So ships farther away will affect fleeing less and ships closer will affect it more. After we've added all of these forces together, we'll set the magnitude to max force. In code, we'll duplicate cohesion, but we'll need another vector, which I'll call vec2. As we're looping through all the other ships, we need to get the vector between the ship calling the separation force function and the other ship. We can do this with vector subtract. Remember that this is a function which doesn't mess with either of the underlying vectors, and we want to subtract other dot position from position so that we get a vector which points from the ship we want to separate from, since inside of the with statement, we're actually referencing that ship's variables. Once we have that vector, we get its length with get magnitude, and I want its length to be capped at a certain amount, so I'll get the minimum of its length and 200. Then, like with arrive, we can divide the distance by 200 to get a percentage. 200 divided by 200 is one, and zero divided by 200 is zero. But this gives us the wrong force, as it scales down as we get closer. So the last step is to invert this percentage by saying one, minus distance divided by 200. Now one minus 200 divided by 200 is zero and one minus zero divided by 200 is one. 
So any ship 200 pixels away or more will not affect our separation force at all, and ships that are closer will affect it more. There's nothing special about this method by the way. I found that it worked well for me in this project, but if you watch other tutorials you'll see other ways of doing it, and really any way that scales the separation force so that closer objects are given more weight will work. Then we scale our VEC2 by this value and add the result into our collection vector, and increase the count by one, because like with a line, we need to know that we leap through at least one ship. But after we've done all of this, we can set magnitude to max force directly. Now we can put this in our ship's step event and run it, and they all try to avoid each other. I think that separation looks pretty cool by itself, but at this point we have all three of our steering behaviors necessary for flocking, so let's turn them all on and run it. And there we go, a pretty decent flocking behavior. You can tweak this behavior in a lot of different ways. For example, by giving different weights to the steering behaviors or adding in other behaviors such as wander. So far, we've had every ship check every other ship. This might be what you want, but it probably won't be. Instead, you'll likely want to have some criteria which another ship has to meet in order to be considered. For example, maybe you want the ship to be a certain distance away, or maybe you only want to do it with a certain faction, or maybe you want to limit it by a vision cone, or some combination of all of these. There's really an infinite amount of ways to decide. I'm going to implement a very basic idea and simply check to see if a ship is within a certain distance. To do this, I'm going to add a point distance check right after the ID check, and then add in a distance variable argument and a default value. Now I need to add this to the other two steering behaviors as well, but then we can come over to our step event and we can add some different distances and even some different weights. Now when we run this we can get some pretty cool behaviors, very similar to the one I've been showing in the background this whole time. One other thing to note at this point is that you might want to start limiting the final steering force. When we only had one or two steering forces, this didn't matter very much, but now we have multiple, and especially if you start weighting the steering forces above zero, these steering forces could add up to be a very high number, higher than you might want. So limiting them again after adding everything together is worth considering. One very important thing to remember is that steering behaviors are not set in stone. They're all made up. My versions are pretty close to Craig Reynolds' original, but they're not exact. They're what work for this demo project. They might not work in another setting. And you can make them look like whatever you want. You can write the functions however you want. There's no right or wrong way to use or design them, just whatever works for you in your project. So I hope that you'll download and experiment with them, but when you do, don't feel like you have to stick with the code that I wrote. In fact, if you do that, you're probably missing out. And as you experiment, you might notice something, lag. Steering behaviors, especially these last three that involve every object looping through every other object in the room and running a fair amount of code for each of those loops, adds up really fast. My computer can handle about 70 ships before dropping below 60 frames per second if I'm not running OBS, and running OBS that number drops by a little bit more. So in the next video I'll cover several optimization tips.